Well hello and welcome to this week's vlog. Uh, now last week, if you remember, I visited Hardcastle Crags. Well, it wasn't last week, but it's in last week's vlog. Uh, and I took a few images, including this one behind me here. Uh, now what I thought I would do this week is I thought that I would show you how I edited that image. So how I went from the original raw files all the way through to a completed image. Because it's, not, it's something I haven't really done very much before, sort of run through my editing process. And I think maybe, maybe you might be interested in it. But it's also an interesting view of how sometimes the image has to come together as much in processing as it does in the camera in the first place. You get a lot of people who say, you know, get it right in camera, get it right in camera. And to some extent that's correct. There are certain things that you need to do in camera that you can't recover in post-processing. But in some instances, like this one, there are things that you just can't get in camera in one shot and especially not without a bit of processing afterwards. So anyway, um, if you just like to watch this uh, little piece about how I process it, then, you know, feel free and I'll pick it back up afterwards. So I'm going to work on this image here, which uh, I took over at Hardcastle Crags. And what drew me to take this image was this really nice um, light here above on the trees where the, the branches are overhanging uh, and also these swirls down this swirl down here which is quite interesting and there's also some some nice movement here which I didn't get on this image because this image is basically I took a bracketed image and this one is the one stop underexposed at 0 0.3 seconds which isn't really pulling out much of this uh, movement however I've also uh, set this one up to edit which is the overexposed bracket bracketed image uh, which is at two seconds and here you can see this is what I like here this really nice sort of movement in the water here and here so that's what I'm going to be working on a mixture of the two now both of these images are from a panoramic uh, it was a five shot pano um, I haven't gone through all the process of uh, stitching that together uh, I've actually done a, an, an a video about panoramic images which I'll put a link up to I did that a few months back and if you want to watch that then you can have a little look at that and that'll tell you how to take and uh, put together panoramic images but yeah I'm not going to actually show you that now because I've already done it what I'm going to work on is just editing these images to get one nice image out of it and I think what I'm going to do normally I'd probably work on the lighter one and try and pull some De detail back using just darkening it off but I think I'm gonna use this dark one and, and try and pull the information out because I have I have had a little play with this I'm not gonna lie uh, and I was worried initially that this dark area here once I started pulling the shadows up and pulling up the exposure a bit it was going to be very very noisy and it's not too bad because that's probably about as far as I'm going to push it in terms of pulling it up anyway uh, so the noise isn't isn't anything really horrendous so I'm going to work on that now what I want to do here is I want to get a mixture of this um, let's just push these back to where they were I want to get a mixture of this here which is this really nice beautiful light where it's sort of falling on these leaves and on this little bit in the bottom right hand corner and over here on this bit here and these lines there's the movement of the water here so I'm going to try and blend the two images together to try and get a composite, if you like, of that. I'm not going to do anything yet with the cropping because there are some elements that I want to maybe just move around a little bit in the shot. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get the shot, the, the, the balance of it correct in terms of the light and the mixture between the two images first. Then I'll start moving a few bits around and then I'll crop it down to how I want it. So I'm going to work on this one, I think, and I want to keep this. I want to keep this as as dark as I can at the top here. I think so. I think what I'm going to do is let's just do a few overall adjustments first. Just ever so slightly drop the highlights and pull these shadows out. So I don't want to lose too much of this, which is what I'm really keen on keeping. Um, what I've done, by the way. I'm clicking the alt key on my keyboard for a PC I think it might be command from Mac I'm not sure but that brings up this uh, this representation so if I push the highlights the whites all the way over you can see 
where it's white, where it's showing, these are blown out pixels, basically of pure white. So if I just drop that, you can see that you've completely lost all the all the uh, data in there. So let's click on that again, and you can see it pulling back. And then if I just release it, you can see we've gone back to a, a reasonably decent image. I just want to pull it forward a touch. I'm not too fussed about losing a little bit there in that. I'll just pull that back with an adjustment brush. Now, let's just pull the blacks now. It should be, it's, it's only a tiny movement and I'm getting a lot of um, very black pixels. So I think under there, I'm going to have to accept that I'm going to lose something because it's so dark under there regardless even on the even on the overexposed version it's still very dark in that area so I'm not too fussed about that um, let's have a look so I think what I'm going to do is take this brush and just pull up the uh, quite big and just pull up the exposure Let's turn this off so you can see what's going on. Just pull up the exposure a little bit in this uh, this bottom area here. Even though I'm actually not going to use all of this, I still want to match it to get it sort of where roughly where I want it. So when I actually come around to matching it all up, it's going to make a lot more sense. So uh, just paint that out in this bottom corner because I want to keep in here. Oh, let's paint that back in. Doesn't really look very good. I want to keep that this highlight on here. I think that's quite important to the image, so I don't want to lose too much of that. Um, okay, and then let's have a look. If we push up, not really push up the clarity a tiny amount. Push up the dehaze, perhaps just a little. Um, maybe push the vibrance and drop the saturation ever so slightly. Just a little bit yeah somewhere like that now that's not looking too bad but what I actually want here is I want it to be much more just trying to probably looking something a bit like that I want it a bit cropped down just going to have a little look at this and just to see I do like this swirl over here though but I think I think that I'm going to probably lose that and just focus on this part here have a look at that yeah that's quite that's not too bad um, but what I want to do is it's going to go back to where I was I still want to incorporate this part down here, this uh, part in the bottom right hand corner, this little bit here. I still want to incorporate that into the image. So I need to work out where I'm going to crop it basically. And then I want to move those areas up into the into the frame. So they're still prominent in the frame. So that's um, definitely something that I'm going to work on um, in Photoshop. So I think I'm just going to take this and darken it down to try and try really just to get it to match a little bit what I've been doing with the other one. Now I know it isn't going to match perfectly, but I can uh, I can work on that. So just flicking between the two, that's pretty close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select these two here down the bottom and I'm going to go to edit in Photoshop, uh, open as layers in Photoshop. So, right, so here we are in Photoshop now and I've got these two layers. So there's the, there's the, uh, long ex the less exposed one and the longer exposed one. And they've married up quite well. It's probably going to do with a little bit more saturation possibly. So might just uh, actually let's just do this first so I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to go to edit and auto align layers and uh, auto and what that's going to do it shouldn't be very much work on this at all I'm hoping because they were both taken from the same panoramic image so 
they should be pretty well aligned anyway but there you go just to check and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top one and I'm going to put an adjustment layer on it and I'm going to set the color to black and I'm going to pick a brush and pick quite a large brush so I'm making this bigger by um, clicking the uh, I think it's the square bracket uh, the uh, right square bracket button to make it a bit bigger uh, as you can see on here I've got it set to um, not very hard so it's got a nice, a nice feathered edge to it it's going to paint this bottom bit in here so essentially now what I've got is the top half of it which is the um, longer uh, the shorter exposure which is more contrasty and it's got these nice colors in it here and the bottom half of it which is now the longer exposure because I've got these nice lines and the movement in the water uh, I am just gonna flip this over and paint back in this light here at the bottom because I like that uh, but other than that I'm not going to do too much with it I'm going to go down to this bottom one actually and just adjust the um, saturation because I just want a bit more colour in it so it matches a bit better with the top part and that's not too bad there so that's not looking too bad now um, so let's just save that and then we'll go back into Lightroom so as you can see now we're back in Lightroom and we've got this nice mix now between the long exposed uh, foreground and the shorter exposed background with a little bit of a um, little bit of paint, painting over on this side uh, to get what we want just there and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at cropping it and moving some of the elements perhaps a little bit in the frame to make it a bit more visually pleasing so uh, I'm going to go to crop tool here and I think that I want it something like this I think perhaps I think about there so I think that's that's how I want my final image to look but I want to so if I just go back just go back to here and I want it I want to move so I want this definitely somewhere in the frame and I want this somewhere in the frame as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where I've just cropped so I'm looking at sort of halfway into this swirl here that's in the bottom corner um, and now I'm, I'm going to move these elements in using Photoshop I might just pull that down a fraction more I'm going to move these elements in let's have a look at um, I normally do this but I've just started looking at um, these the, the actual image sizes because I have always cropped to a custom size um, and never really worried about it but just lately since, since I've started printing um, I think that I maybe need to move away from that a touch and start looking at actual standard sizes uh, for print so what I've done is I've just cropped this to a 16 by 10 um, which is essentially moved this into the bottom here which I'm just going to need to move up a bit more um, and then I'm not sure I like that so I might just go back and crop it how I had it because I think that on the third works a lot better 16 by 9 there I think that works better there on that third um, and then I'll pull this up somewhere into the shot and pull this up somewhere into a shot so basically what I've done is I've fiddled about for about 25 minutes trying to put this uh, move this clump of grass into the bottom right hand corner and to be honest with you it doesn't work um, I will just show you um, what I did uh, what I was playing about with so this bit here this bit of grass here I moved it up into here uh, so when I was in um, Lightroom it's just moved into this corner but to be quite frank it really doesn't make that much difference I don't think 
it doesn't add anything to the image it looks a little bit like it's been put there and if it looks like it's been put there then um, it kind of defeated the object of uh, what I was trying to do so I'm just literally gone back into Photoshop and just really um, just got rid of that um, just because it just doesn't work so I'm going to save it back out as it was I mean it's always worth a look because it is a nice feature of the shot I do like it I also like this little one in the bottom corner here but to be honest with you I think moving them into the image is going to add absolutely nothing to the image so um, I have moved away from that and I'm just going to keep it as is um, and what I'll do is have a look at um, just doing a bit more now in, in Lightroom and maybe a bit of tidying up in Photoshop. That was a long bit of, uh, I'm going to, obviously I've cut that bit out, but that was a long bit of work for nothing there. Uh, but it just goes to show, you know, you can experiment and sometimes it just doesn't work. So you just go back to where you were. So here we are, we're back in, um, back in Lightroom now and I've got it pretty much now how I want it. However, I think I'm going to just pull this in here so that you can see this little bit in the bottom corner here because I think that uh, it, it does need a little bit and that just gives it there so right let's have a look now now what I want to do I think um, is just want to maybe just start tidying it up a little bit um, this in the background here is really distracting for me um, it kind of is taken away from the tree because it's too it's too obvious and too distracting so I'm gonna go back into Photoshop now and I'm gonna try and remove some of these uh, distractions so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, export it again or edit it again and that will edit it with the crop um, and produce another copy uh, so if I do mess it up I've always got this one to go back to okay so now we're back in Photoshop again and I want to I really want to tidy some of this up so it's just these branches that are laying it looks like a fallen tree and they're just really very distracting uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to get rid of them um, to an extent so I'm going to just I've got the lasso selection here and I'm just going to get rid of the most obvious ones or try to I'm going to shift an F5 that's going to bring up this content aware fill box uh, I'm just going to click OK and see what it does now yeah you see that's already getting rid of it a bit uh, let's go try and get rid of this one as well again shift an F5 and I know it's a bit messy at the moment but we'll tidy it up in a minute so just it's just these major ones here that are going to be really bright in the in the back of the image I just want to get rid of them and that will help to bring out perhaps this one here so if we zoom out now that's a lot more pleasing it's still messy but it's a lot more pleasing than it was so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to just I think what I'll do is I'll switch the clone tool on or use the clone tool should I say go into this clone source box which you can um, find by clicking on window and then clicking on the clone source now bring it up and I'm just going to switch this on which is going to clone um, a mirror image of the clone source area so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select over here somewhere and I'm just going to start just pulling that in a bit and that's not now that is <laughs> just keep selecting little bits uh, that are in different areas and just clone over the top bit obvious there there we go so now when I pull out 
that looks a lot more natural it does still look a little bit like it's a mirror image of this side so I think what I might do is just um, pull the opacity down a bit on this to say 60 come over here select a bit of this as my clone source and just clone a bit of that in on top so it doesn't look quite so obvious let's get rid of that really bright area there come down here there you go now I'm going to pull that out that's tidied that up nicely that's a lot better a lot neater so um, yeah if we look at it well I'll come in and come back to that in a minute so what else do I want to do here is there anything else that's messy uh, I'm going to get rid of that down there but I'll just get rid of that with the lasso tool and shift and F5 it should nicely work um, there's a little summit there some rubbish shift and F5 get rid of that oh one button uh, what else let's have a look or anything else that I'm looking at it looks a bit distracting I think that does it's one leaf here in fact well let's just get rid of that leaf for a start and if that branch could do with going uh, no that's all right there I think that's not too bad so overall I'm a lot happier with that now. Um, that's tidied that back up nicely, and you can't you can't really see. I mean, you can if you go right close in that it's a bit messy, but it's in the background anyway. And I'll do another couple of little bits to sort that out. So let's save that back into Lightroom. So it'd be good to see a comparison of the two, just to see how much difference those um, getting rid of those logs has made so there it is with the logs and there it is without no wait no wait there it is without so there it is with them and there it is without them so so that's the original and that's with the logs removed I think that looks a lot neater now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush tool here and I'm going to just pull down the shadows a bit and I'm going to brush across this back just to hide it even more just to pull that down a bit because what I really want is a nice contrast between this front and back so let's just pull those shadows down a bit more um, and I'll have another one with the, with the highlights boosted so just push up the highlights a bit just painting over the top here maybe a bit of saturation to pull the shadows back and that'll really that should yeah that's better and push the contrast a bit on that okay so I think that looks quite nice I think this foreground now is a bit bright so I'm going to put a gradient tool in here and I'm going to push the contrast up maybe dehaze a little bit because that normally looks quite nice on water if you can get that right maybe push the clarity up oh no don't do that leave the clarity alone uh, drop the black slightly 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 push the shadows up a little tiny bit perhaps yeah and that's quite nice I quite like that that's quite nice and contrasty now um, put a little bit put a little vignette on as I tend to do on most of my images just to pull your eyes into the middle those the vibrance up a bit more as well 
a bit blue down in that corner there. So I'm just going to paint a bit of yellow in there. Just a little bit. And maybe drop the saturation a touch. Just to get rid of that blue. And yeah, quite like that, I think. little bit of data lost there a little bit of blue still in there so okay let's just uh, take that back off a of full screen just going to select this one here and just work it over there a bit more that's better um, let's have a look in in here well yeah let's have a look in here See if there's anything we can do about that. A bit much there. Oh, it's not too bad actually. I don't want it to start looking dirty. It can have a habit of looking a bit dirty with the when you pull down the pull down the whites to the cut the highlights too much. Because some areas are just meant to be blown out. That's just how they are. Well, they just look that bright. But that one I don't think does. That's that's better. That's better in there now. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Yep, yeah, I quite like that. So let's go from the from the uh, original image. So here are the original images. This one here, which was the underexposed one. And this one here, which was the overexposed one, and this is the final image that's going to go into the vlog. That wasn't entirely true um, because I made a couple more changes, which I'm going to show you now. I was not happy here with this background. It was very messy. Um, and also this bit here uh, around these tree line was particularly messy as well. So what I did to sort that out was that I came back into Lightroom uh, and Photoshop actually and I painted a lot more um, of the surrounding areas in to tidy it up a bit so I wanted to make this line here uh, where the water meets the uh, the foliage to be a lot clearer a lot more crisp so I used some of this here copied it over to here uh, I also wanted to get rid of that nasty area that was around the bottom of this branch here so what I did was is that I came over to this bit here where I've got some nice um, brickwork and I just copied it over into here and just clear, cleaned it up around the branch area. And because when you're doing this type of replacement work, especially if you're using the photo aware fill, it can get very mudgy and not particularly clear or sharp. So what I actually did was is that I went into some of this area here and I painted in some, uh, let's see if I can find the actual bit where I did it, uh, that one I painted in some uh, deep shadows and boosted the clarity really generally across the piece, uh, I think it was with this one here, yeah, so I boosted the clarity which kind of brings out, like crunches the blacks and pulls up the highlights and kind of crunches the midtones and uh, and gives you a much sharper image. So basically it's it's kind of hiding it really but when you when you come out you can't notice now anywhere near as much as you could have done with the original piece that I'd finished uh, that this has been manipulated and, and cloned an awful lot so I think it looks a lot crisper uh, and a lot cleaner as a result. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that you got something out of it. Um, like I said before it's not just about what you get in camera, it's also about your post-processing work. That can really, you know, make or break an image. And uh, I hope in this instance it's it's enhanced the original. So, um, yeah, I really hope you've uh, hope you enjoyed watching that. Um, one thing before I go, um, as you know, I do the You're In Focus um, videos. Um, I'm still waiting for any video submissions this week or this time around, so... Um, if I don't get any, then unfortunately I won't be able to produce a video. Um, 
you know, which is fine. You know, I only do it for you guys anyway. But if uh, if you can or if you want to, I'd really appreciate it if you got some video submissions into me about uh, the best and worst advice that you've had uh, in terms of photography. If you're a new vlogger and you want some airtime, uh, you want some exposure. If you know of anyone or you you have a charity event or your charity cause yourself, then send me a video about that. Um, yeah, and if you don't send it in, I can't I can't do anything. So uh, so yeah, so if you could, that'd be really greatly appreciated. Anyway, like I said, hope you've enjoyed this little video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully back out in the landscape or in the street next week and I'll see you again soon.